Hey everybody, it is I, Super Paul Games, and welcome back to... Sorry, I'm gonna move the mic. I should've done that ahead of time. Lee, lads in distress. Uh, we've just come back from our beautiful picnic at the pond, in which Princess Charming here didn't get any. Thankfully, Zell is exactly where I left him, snoring away in the chair, his head on the table. <sighs> Woo! Good thing I didn't wake him. I want this to be a surprise. Making sure his breathing is steady, I tiptoe my way across the room towards the bed. Is that because you drugged him that you gotta make sure the breathing is steady? Quickly shoving the books under the bed, I slide under the blankets and shift into a more comfortable position. Oh my word, what are you doing? Are we gonna seduce him? Are you gonna put, like, pull a prank and be like, I just had your baby! I freeze mid-action, turning to look at Zell. He seems to be waking up now as I slowly fall out terrain open. She's like, oh shoot. As Zell lifts his head, I notice the redness of his eyes and some suspicious tear stains on his cheek. Aw, oh, you were crying like a baby. Has he been crying? Uh, what, what? I immediately close my eyes, pretending to still be asleep. Maybe she walked around the room to silently fart everywhere. Oh, um, Charming, you're back. Mm. I suddenly feel arms on my shoulders, pulling me into a tight hug. My eyes fly... Uh, my eyes? Yeah, my eyes fly open in shock. Uh, heavens! Uh, I was sleeping. I thought you left. Mm, I woke up in the middle of the night, and you were gone. <laughs> uh, I thought... You had enough of living like this and went back home. I thought you left without saying goodbye. Alright, it would be rude of her to leave without saying goodbye, bro. But I can understand if... Like, I don't know, I might be able to pull off the tower life forever, but I don't think most people would be able to. I understood why you would have done that, but I was still so sad. <laughs> I missed you. I'm so glad you're here, Charmaine. Overly attached boyfriend, you're gone for five minutes to take a pee and he's like, never leave me. Zell babbles on, sounding close to Tiaz. I pull away from him slightly, staring at his distraught face. Has he been crying because he thought I wouldn't be coming back? My f er, feeling my heart clench at the sight of tears, I reach out and brush my fingers against the wetness on his cheeks. As if I could ever leave him like that. Uh-oh. She caught the feels train. As much as I hate to admit it, he meals, means too much to me already. Not meals, she's not going to eat them. Although I haven't uh, ever known him for that long, even known him. You're an idiot. Uh, I never would leave without saying farewell, dummy. Oh, I'm, uh, well, oh I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm just so happy to see you again. Where did you go? Why didn't you leave a note? Don't leave me. Or wait, or wait, why don't you wake me and tell me before shipping, slipping out? Um, I... I bet she had to take a big old dump in the forest. Sign, I tug the books from the hiding spot under the bed. Aw, did she go get him some new books? That's adorable. I bought some books for us? Well, mostly for you. Today's your birthday, isn't it? Happy birthday! As a surprised look on Zell's face, I hastily elaborate. Your kingdom used to have a kingdom-wide activities, you know, like every year on your birthday to mourn your disappearance and shit. So that's how I know today's your birthday. Oh, that's so depressing. I wanted to give you a surprise present, so I snuck up to head to the nearest village to buy these for you. I'm sorry I worried you. I figured I could make it back to you, um, like before you woke up and shit, bro. Zell blinks at me silently for a moment. As the silence drags on, I shift uncomfortably comfortably. Sorry. I got distracted because I was thinking of the sentence being read as I shit uncomfortably. I'm like, that's horrible. Wondering if I did something wrong. I, I, I'm i sorry. Uh, did you not like this present? Did I overstep my boundaries? You don't have to take them if you don't like books. I swear I went all oh, that work to do a nice gesture. I think I like this guy. Zell suddenly pulls me into a strong hug again. Oh, finally gonna get to rub chesticles. His arms wrap around me tightly, not letting me go anywhere. Overwhelmed by his proximity and his warmth, I let myself melt into his arms, sighing with contentment. No, I love your present. I'm going to read the fuck out of this book. Thank you. This is the best present I have ever received. I am so touched and happy right now. Mm, I hope you touch me. I don't even know what to say. Thank you so much. 
You really worked on that. Zell pulls away all too soon, and I try to push away the pang of disappointment. She's like, hold me now. Hold me closer, Tiny Dancer. He looks at me with wide eyes, shining in excitement. Good nerd gift. Yeah, which ones are for me? Um, uh, it'd be hilarious if everything she bought was like romance novels for herself, or for Zell to get like a clue. I stare down at the pile of books in my hand. Half are educational books about history, politics, and other important matters. Ooh, I would like those. And the other half are fictional stories about adventures and mysteries. I will let you read those. I don't want those, girl. I didn't know which would be more suitable for Zell's taste, so I ended up buying both and deciding later instead. I just didn't realize later would come so soon. Sometimes you come earlier than you expect. It happens. Quit judging me. I don't know what he likes. What kind of books did he like in the previous episode? I don't remember what he said he liked. Like, if it was me, I would want the history books. That's what I would like. But most people are going to want the, um, you know, the fantastical adventure books. And he didn't say he had a very active imagination. So why don't we give him the storybooks? Zell likes adventures, doesn't he? I mean, he probably likes reading about them. And he's always so curious about the world. No surprise there. I think he will enjoy these stories about wild adventures and journeys more. After all, it is his birthday, and I should give him a more enjoyable, fun present. I place the storybooks in his waiting arms. Ah, uh, these are like for you and stuff? I chose some of my favorite fictional books for you. Most of these are either adventure stories or murder mysteries. Agatha Christie's, am I right? I'm not sure if they're your cup of tea, but I hope you enjoy them anyways. Zell eyes the colorful book of the... The... What? The colorful cover of the book! I know how to read. With an almost reverent look on his face, his finger is stroking. Oh, yes, stroke it for me. The illustration gently. Oh, thank you. I love them. I love them so much. I am so happy to finally have new books to read. His enthusiasm is contagious. I find myself beaming back at him, pleased that I can have made him so happy with happy simple gesture times. I watch as he flips open a page and skims the words excitedly. Zell's face suddenly falls, and I can feel his happiness fading away. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you like them? Frantically, I try to recall the content of that particular book. I don't think I accidentally chose any books that would be offensive or depressing. No, um, no, it's, it's not that. Is it a book like your mom used to read you? It's just, uh... Zell gives a heavy sigh. <sighs> Still avoiding my eyes. I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can actually read... Read these books. I mean, I, I know how to read. I still remember how to read. Since I pick up those old books every once in a while. Especially when I'm bored. I thought you spent all your time reading those damn books. So what do you do? Just stare at the wall? Oh my word, I spent all my time being a teenage beautiful girl. Going to the city to get you damn books? You don't even know how to read, you illiterate bitch! It's, uh... See, I was taken away when I was eight. I was nowhere near finishing my lessons. Oh, okay, so you got, like, a little kid reading level. I got you. My, um... My reading skills are still that around an eight-year-old. Even though I'm officially 18 now. Oh, well, you'd fit right in in the American educational system. Oh! Timely topical zo zoom. Whatever. <laughs> Slam? I don't know what I'm thinking about. I went to the American public education system, so... I can't even, like, make commentary on it without being like, derpa derpa. Um, I'm ashamed to admit... I may not even be able to understand this simple language. I I'm sorry. Uh, you went to so much trouble to buy books for me. As my birthday present, and I... It's a good thing we did not get him the history books. Don't worry, uh, I, I, I promise I'll try my hardest to read these books over and over again until I understand what they mean. Zell tries to give me a fake cheerful smile, but the embarrassed flush on his cheeks and his downcast eyes tell me all I need to know. This kid is lost. He needs a pop-up book. Inwardly, I berate myself for my oversight. Girl, do not do that. It's a simple misunderstanding, right? You're doing your best. What else are you going to get him? You're like, I bought you another brick to look at. Another stone and mortar to look at. He that he would probably like that. He'd probably be like, this is the best brick I've looked at in a year. And then he'd jerk off to it. 
How did I not anticipate this problem before? I should have picked another present! Now I made him feel bad about himself, when it is clearly not his fault that he has received less education, that dummy. Taking his hand in mine, I give him a comforting pat. There, there, simpleton! Hey, don't worry about it. It's okay. I have friends who are dummies, too. I'm sorry. It's my fault I didn't think about this in the first place. Listen, why don't I help you with this? I can read out loud to you, and if you don't understand any word or idea, just ask me immediately and I'll explain it to you. Those shocked eyes meet mine. Would you like me to do that for you? Yeah, of course. Oh, wait, I think it's supposed to say uh, this guy's Zell. Oh, wait, of course. Or maybe she's supposed to. Of course, I'd be more than happy to. Surprisingly, I find I do mean it. What? So she might have been just like, yeah, I'll help you, whatever. Oh, actually, I don't mind helping this dingus. If I had to read to anyone else, I would probably be incredibly reluctant to do so. Me too. End of LP. However, because it is Zell, and for some strange reason, I'm actually looking forward to it. If I had any doubts about my offer, the brilliant smile that spreads, that's not all that was spread, honey, across Zell's face and lights up his eyes just erases all of my hesitation. Thank you. Thank you, Charming. Thanks. That would be amazeballs. Amazing. Um, I'm sorry. I give you so much trouble. You don't. You really do. But you don't. Besides, you're intelligent. I mean, you dressed yourself, I guess. I'm sure you'll understand everything easily, so I won't have to do much. Do you want to get started now? Zell's enthusiastic nodding makes me laugh. Alright then, come sit a little closer, so I don't have to yell and destroy my throat by reading loudly for hours. That's what I do for all of you when I do LPs. Why don't you appreciate it? Actually, I appreciate everybody that's... You must appreciate somewhat if you're on whatever episode we're on, 10 or whatever here. here. Scooting over closer to the wall on the bed, I open the first book and pet the space next to me. Oh, damn, she's going to seduce you with words, son. She's like, come sit here by mama, Princess Charming Pants. Zell hesitates for a brief moment, blushing furiously before climbing into bed, settling down beside me. To be able to see the pages of the book, Zell is sitting so close to me that his head is basically leaning against my so shoulder. There are no soldiers in here. Ready? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you again, Charming. You have no idea how much this means to me. It's better not be a romance novel. Trying not to get distracted by the affection in his voice or his closeness, I clear my throat <laughs> and begin a reading. Zell looks practically captivated by the story, often gasping, oh, in childlike excitement. I was going to say excrement. That would have been totally different at some of the more exciting parts. I find myself becoming more and more involved in the story as I read, half due to Zell's contagious enthusiasm. Um, at some point, I even start making sound effects. <laughs> Dang. As, I, as though I were reading a bedtime story to a child, causing Zell to giggle and blush. <laughs> That's his giggle. You can imagine the blush. Blush sound effect. I soon lose, lose track of time as I continue reading, pausing to catch my breath at certain times. Eventually, Zell's breathing slows. Oh no, you're murdering him with the book! Out of the corner of my eye, I've noticed that Zell's eyes are closed, his head on my shoulder, and a content smile on his sleeping face. I could never fall asleep to a story. Even when I was a kid, when people would read a story to me, I could not fall asleep because I'm like, I need to know how it ends. I need to know what happens next. Quietly, so not as to wake him, I let my voice trail off and close the book. Zell's steady breath, uh, breaths tickle my neck as he inhales and exhales. He looks so carefree and innocent while he sleeps that my lips involuntarily curve up to a smile. Smile. Zell? I breathe out his name softly as I give in to the urge to brush the errant strands of hair out of his face. Oh, he's sleeping and she's molesting his hair. She's like, I'm gonna wear it and be Zell. The fluttering in my stomach comes back once again in full force. Hopefully it's not like a bad taco you had earlier, giving me no choice but to admit my feelings. I've fallen in love with him, haven't I? Dun, dun, dun. Not only does she want the man boner, she wants the whole package. 
I really do want the package. Oh, girl. Despite my best efforts to resist his charm, he has stolen my heart with his childlike innocence and sincere sweetness. That's what people say to me when I play in the mud and run around pooping my pants. Oh, look at his childlike innocence. So unlike anything I've seen before. <laughs> Even his timidity, or rather cowardice and naivety, seems endearing to me now. Honey, did you have to say cowardice? That's so judgmental. She's like, I remember when we were outside and a bear showed up and he peed himself and ran. Oh, I love that. Somehow, in a world full of greed and selfishness, Cell remained untouched by the darkness of men's hearts. See, all it takes to remain pure is to get trapped by a witch in a tower protected by a dragon for a decade. And I will do everything I can to protect that innocent part of him. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. Oh, no, this is bad. I watch intently as the silvery words continue to appear on the pages, shimmering in the air for a brief moment before disappearing. Zell walks up behind me and peeks over my shoulder. Uh, what's the matter? Are you all right? It's a message from Nicole. Ugh. My kingdom's like in trouble and stuff. There's been an uprising? Because your parents ain't got no money to pay... Wait! Now I feel terrible. We need money for your parents so they can have guards to keep the peasants down so they don't have a fundamentalist revolt for democracy. Apparently the people were outraged at hearing their princess had skipped out on them. Yeah, I'm sure that's why the rebellion happened. People are always rebelling because the re princess left for a day or two or a week or a month. The rebellion has been brewing for some time now due to discontentment over the kingdom's, kingdom's poverty, and people have finally made their first move. I need to go home, like, now. Uh-oh. Well, everybody, that's where we're going to end today. There's a crisis back home in the Lunar Kingdom. Princess Charming needs to get back there. How is she going to get back there, and will Zell go with her? Is this going to be the end of their relationship? They better go together. I'm this many episodes in. I am invested. Thanks for hanging out, and take it easy, everybody.